Hello, everybody. Episode two. Look at fancy ass. We made it past one. <laughs> I am so, 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 so stinkingly excited today to have my one of my favorite people on the planet Earth to be here with me, Come Sarah on. Walton. You're she so is nice. my business coach. She's my life coach. She is my screw my head on right kind of coach. <laughs> <laughs> And I owe a lot of what I was able to accomplish um, mm -hmm. in my small, teeny, tiny business to Sarah. So Sarah, thank you so much oh my for gosh. screwing my head on right most of the time. Yeah, and it's all you though. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. You know you put in all this, all the elbow grease and the hard work and the sweat, blood and tears. Yeah, that too. But it really helps having someone like you in my corner who can like seem kind of like x-ray through me and, and know exactly what to say, when to say it and how to get me from point A to point B. So thank you so much. And I'm so excited that I will have you here today, shine your brilliance on this call and maybe help someone else through indirectly through this video to maybe make one baby step because it's all about that first little tiny step to get to their next goal. So before we go into the good stuff, I mean, not that this is not good stuff. Um, but tell us who is Sarah and what do you do? Oh, okay. Hi. Well, first of all, I'm I'm thrilled to be here. I'm so excited. I love your business so much, as you know, and I am also one of your biggest fans. And um, I think I think what you're doing here is really cool. So I'm really happy to be a part of it. So I just wanted to say thank you for having me. Okay. Um, and what do I do? I am a business coach, right? And a success coach is basically one of my favorite ways to describe it. People go, oh, I get what that is. Um, and I really have the heart of my work around our relationship to money as women, especially, and our relationship to joy and giving ourselves permission to live life to its fullest. I think there are so many of us all throughout our childhoods in so many different ways we were told to just sort of, you know, stop having feelings, <laughs> stop annoying other people and damn it, just get everything done that I need to have done. And then they have, everything will be great. Thanks. And it's not quite given that way. The, the message isn't quite given that way, but it is so clear to me and watching so many of us, I would say, you know, age 25 and up <laughs> that are just like th this feeling of like, am I allowed to want things? Am I allowed to have ambition? Am I allowed to make a lot of money? And I just keep wondering when did we get like this? When did we sit around and start waiting for other people to tell us it was okay to do what we want to do? Um, and of course, we'll always be responsible because all of us are, right? Anybody who thinks they're living their life to keep other people happy is very responsible and very aware of what's going on around them. And so I think I kind of consider it my job. My tagline is, you know, more money in the hands of more women because I love the way women handle money. I think if we had more women with money. We wouldn't be dropping bombs on other people's children. We would be dropping food, medicine, and water. I think if we can get those things within an inch of where we need them, why aren't we dropping things that actually provide life and sustain life? And I think if we had more women at the top, it would look like that. Um, every woman I know who has a lot of money is incredibly generous and gives it out in, in droves um, or does great things with it or works on causes. And so at the heart of me wanting to put more money in the hands of more women is this idea that we have the right to want what we want. And it is 100%, not only acceptable, but desirable for us to achieve those things that we want and to live life on our terms. I hope I answered your question. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and you know, you touched on so many important points. Like I don't, like my head is running into a million directions. I don't even know like where, because it's everything, everything that you said makes so much sense and is mm. so important. And I know that, from several conversations that we've had, I came up with this idea for the podcast and to call it, give yourself permission slip because we have all these limiting beliefs that like, we're not supposed to have all this money. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you're gonna spend all this money on trip by yourself? What do you mean? Like you, you can charge that much or like you're gonna take this time off work and away from your family. So it's like, it goes back all the way to that permission. Like we can give this permission to ourselves. And we don't need this permission from our parents or our husbands or our children, because even if they give us that permission, but we still don't give us that permission, it's still not going to work. Exactly. Right. And then we end up in this like, well, I almost went to Italy, right? I yes. almost started a business. I almost started painting classes. Like, really? Almost? And then you're, I don't know, 100 years old on your deathbed. And you're like, well, I almost lived a life. I got, right. I don't want to. Yeah. Well, almost. <laughs> Yeah. And it will give you chills. Um, and you know, 
that is like the the name of my very, very first podcast episode ever is don't live a life of almost. And I think, you know, when Anna, when you and I were talking about it, you were like, oh my God, oh my God. Right. And it is that feeling. Um, and there's so many people doing it, you know, since we're talking about travel, one of the things that we've done in research and found out is that, you know, one in five people as they're like laying in that deathbed that we all know we're eventually going to lay in, right? If we're lucky, that's how we go. Uh, one in five really regrets not traveling more. And I think, you know, we have, we have some things going on on planet earth right now, in case people haven't noticed, there's some things going on. Um, <laughs> hurricanes, fires, floods, you know, wars it's happening. Right. And so what, what more perfect time to make sure you do what you want to do as far as experiencing the life you want to experience. Um, and you know, for some people that's, that's gelato in Florence, right? For other people, it is making sure they read books by themselves on the beach for other people. It's, um, all of the best food on the planet that they haven't been able to try yet. And for others, it's making new friends. And I think I, I can't think of anything more urgent than our own happiness. All of us who identify as women, right? And this, our own happiness that we fight for that, because honestly, when women are happy, when we're fulfilled, when we're satisfied and we stand up to present something or to share something or to talk to our, our loved ones, oh no, everything changes, right? There's all those silly phrases like happy wife, happy life, all that, but they're so rooted in the truth. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, right? There's all these really funny phrases, but they're so rooted in that truth. And because when we were little girls, we were told, oh, stop crying. Where's my, where's my pretty smile? The message behind that is your emotions are bothering me. Do something I like. And we pick that up real quick, real quick. We know that we're here just to exist, to make sure everyone else is okay. And at some point in our lives, we need to turn that inward and start looking at who we want to be on this planet and how we want to love other people. And the best way to do that is to be as fulfilled and as satisfied as possible. And for so many of us, you know, it's experience. That's the only thing that life can't take away from us, right? And we look at, the reason I say 25 and above, we're the ones who really suffer with this. If we look at, you know, even a lot of the millennials too, like this, this idea that you don't want things, right? You want experiences yep. and it's happening. And I'm so happy to see that because it's the only thing people can't take away is what you learn, what you know, what you experience and who you love. Anything else can be taken, but those experiences cannot. And I think there's a, there's a grounding and a foundation in that that you just can't find by, you know, buying another bag, buying another pair of shoes. Those things are fun, but it's completely different when you create an experience no one can take away. You know what else is different? Well, you buy that bag and that, those pairs of shoes, like in Venice, maybe. Yeah. Oh, they're gorgeous. <laughs> I, I have some. On yes. the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that those kinds of experiences that I look forward to, like, I like things. We all like things, right? But oh yeah, how many bags do I need? But I can buy a new bag when I'm in Venice or in Italy. Like I just love Italy, so I use Venice as an example. And it doesn't have to be a three thousand dollar bag. I don't need that. Like I'll spend three thousand on the actual trip. I'll buy right. A 30... <laughs> right. I'll I'll buy like a thirty euro bag that will be my favorite bag for the next five years, and I'm gonna cherish it. And I'm, every time I'm gonna look at that bag, it's gonna bring back the memories and just gonna make me like so much happier. Then I'll spend three hundred dollars on the bag at Macy's on the Route Seventeen and be like. I would be happy for like half a second and then like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like it, right. it's, it's just like the, same. It, the yeah. gift, give, like the travel gift is that keeps on giving because it reminds you throughout, like I have a blanket from Scotland or I have a bag from Italy or I have a candle from Spain. And I just keep thinking about those trips and it makes me happy again. Yeah, no, that's exactly right because it's tied to the experience and that gives it so much more value. And I have the same thing. I have a green, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to share the story. I love it so much. And I have a green bag I bought in Florence actually. And it's one of my favorites. And then I bought a scarf that I tie on the bag, right? And I always like, but it for me, it's the same experience. Like I remember the gelato I was eating when I walked in that store. I remember what I was wearing. Like, like it does all those things. I remember who I was with and what we did afterwards. And it's, it's just so different and you can't get it any other way. It's not the same as like running to the mall or Nordstrom or Saks or wherever the heck people are shopping these days. Cause we all shop yeah. online. I don't know. So it's like, you know, wherever people are shopping, it's not the same. There is nothing like that. And then if you do love your shoes in your bags, right, they're beautiful. What a joy to get them at a moment when 
one, you couldn't get them anywhere else. They're completely unique. You can't find them. You're not going to run into, you know, Susie in the grocery store and she's got the same one, right? So you have your own, but it also is all of the other experience that's tied into that. And what that does is just different. And I think it can remind all of us who do have a harder time giving ourselves permission to do everything that we want. Um, that's such a great reminder. Look what, look what's possible when you do. Look what happens when you do get what you want, you know, when you give yourself permission. It's pretty cool. It is amazing. And I know I keep um, talking about Venice because it's on my mind because I love Venice. <laughs> too. But, I love Venice. Yeah. But you know, like when it goes to back to giving yourself permission, when I was creating our trip to Venice that we're doing at the end of the year, I was like, what do I personally as Anna want to do? Not what do would my clients like, which I know a lot of gurus like teaching, like what does the market want? Give them what they want. I'm like, what do I want? And I yeah. really wanted to experience Venetian Carnival because I know like with my two little kids, like what are the chances I'm going to go to a Venetian Carnival anytime soon? Zero to none. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, right. okay, I'm not going to go to Venice in February because it's just like not working out and I'm going to be there in December, but I really want this thinking Carnival. So I was like, I'm going to rewrite the rules and do my own Carnival in December at the hotel where we're staying. And we're going to dress up in the dresses and we're going to oh. do the hair and makeup. Like who said I can't? I like I had to give myself my own permission, and I'm like, oh shoot, I can do this. Yeah, like it's it's time to start rewriting the rules. Yeah, it is. It is. And look at what you just did, right? Because now not only are you offering that for yourself, you're offering it for everyone else. You know who's on that trip with you and gets to go do that, and I think that's amazing. And that that's what I mean by as women, we always pay it forward. Once we're happy, we're satisfied, we give ourselves permission. It always gets paid forward, and that's why you know, this moralization that can happen, like, really, you're going to do that, like that thing that can happen. And by the way, that's woman on woman crime. So don't say that to your friends anymore. Encourage them, let them go do what they love, right? We were all taught to do this to each other. And just ask yourself who wins if we keep doing that. That's all I'll say about that. But encourage each other to go and you go and do this, you're so much happier. And then the other thing I love too, Anna, is you're giving other women permission to do the same thing. And it's just so powerful, because if we're all happy and satisfied, imagine how different the world would be. It's, it's mind blowing, you know, it like I, when you say like, we have to fill our cup first and we have to make sure that we're okay first. Mm -hmm. I keep thinking, of course, of a travel analogy, because there's nothing else in the world <laughs> except for travel for me. <laughs> I keep thinking of, you know, when in, on the plane, the masks fall, mm -hmm. like the oxygen mask, and they like put it on yourself first and then put it on everybody else. Because if you don't put it on yourself first, you cannot help anyone else. Yeah. That's and exactly that's kind right. of the analogy I have in my head. Like if I am not okay, my kids are not okay. My husband is not okay. My parents are not okay. My business is definitely not okay because nobody else is going to do it unless I actually sit down and do the work. Yeah. So like, it's a lot of responsibility on our shoulders. And we're like, okay, no, I have to keep going like that energizer bunny and do all these 45 things on my to-do list. Oh my God, I didn't get to do them. I'm a failure. And then right. it's like this vicious cycle. But like, as much as we need to put the time into the work, we need mm -hmm. to put the time into our well-being. I go yeah. on a trip. And I come back and I'm like, oh my God, I'm a yep. new person. Like I'm fresher, I'm more exciting, I'm more patient, I'm just like better. And I mean, yes, my bank account is probably smaller when I come back, but- But always worth it. Yeah, but it gives me the inspiration mm -hmm. to like work harder and do more and do better things that will replenish that bank account. We can always make more money. We cannot make more time. That's what I always say. Money's infinite. You can always make more money. Um, you know, and anyone who just went, what, um, my favorite thing is to say, look around your house right now, look at everything you own. Someone created that out of thin air and then you bought it. You can always make more money, right? It's just one of those, it's a, it's a fact, right. And it's always circulating around the globe. And I, I would never, you know, I remember saying this to my kids when they were really young, don't hate me, but I love Disney. I know. I love it. I don't know. I was just, you know, my childhood was not happy at all. Well, it was a little happy, but it wasn't that happy. Right. And Disney was a place I could go. And it just, to me, signified like happiness and joy and silliness. And I don't know, they're pumping vanilla or cinnamon into the air. I don't know what it, but it's just like, oh my God, I'm so happy. Right. And when I, our kids were young, you know, my then husband was like, we're spending how much on this trip? And I was like, Yes, we are. Right. And I have, and I paid for it. I was like, this is coming out of the Sarah side of the fund and we're freaking going. And every day it was like, oh my God, why didn't we do this sooner? Oh my God. I'm so glad we did this. I've never heard anyone come home from a trip and be like, yeah, that wasn't worth it. I've actually never heard that. Um, especially if it's somewhere you've always wanted to see. 
or you get to meet new people. Um, you get to taste something new that you haven't tasted before. You get to come home with a little something for yourself that you can't get anywhere else. Those little things, I've never heard someone come home and say that wasn't worth the money ever, never. Um, and I've, I work inside travel. I've done all those things. I love to travel and I've never heard anyone say that. And I think that's really important. It's almost like working out, right? You don't come home from work and go, God, I wish I hadn't done that. No, everybody's like, dang, that was the best thing ever. And then you have to write that down. So you remember to go again, but it's the same idea with travel. I would rather somebody go and have the experience than wonder, because I, I personally think that regret and that almost it's, that's a special form of hell. I really think that knowing what you could have done or could have had and you didn't, ugh. And a lot of times, you know, I'll talk to people about that when it comes to conversations, telling people you love them, um, buying yourself something beautiful, getting out of debt, like all the things that I teach and talk about, um, travel's one of them. It's just one of them. Like, what good is that money doing sitting in the bank if you're miserable? That's not what it, that's not what money's for. Um, you know, and being responsible about it but using it well and using it wisely to create something um, that's just incredible. And boy, the people that you meet, I know I happen to know a few people who've gone on your trips, Anna. And I think the, the women that you attract on these trips and what they get to do is amazing. Um, and while you were talking about how happy you are when you come back, I was imagining all of the, um, like the empty nesters, cause I'm, I'm like this close, right? So the empty nesters is like, I know for me, when I've been on a trip, I was just imagining myself walking into the grocery store, coming home. I am so much nicer. Like I'm pretty nice all the time. I am so much nicer. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, you look so beautiful. What's happening? Oh my God, let's have a conversation, cashier. They're like, oh, she went out again. Look at her, look at her go, you know, but it's this thing where we spread that happiness and joy and just the difference uh, between that and then having more money in the bank, but you hate your life. Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? This, this is what life is for is to go and explore. Oh my God. I just went on a whole tangent, but I, no, no, this is great. And you know, the only trips that I regret are the ones I didn't take. Yeah, no, I think that's right. I think that's right. Like, I still remember that opportunity to go to Japan when I was 21 and I didn't, Oof. and it's like haunting me. It's still there, right? It's yeah. Haunting yeah. Me. yeah. Like, why didn't I get not, I mean, I, I hope one day I'll go, but when people say like, oh, one day I'll go to Japan. No, you will not unless you actually have an actionable plan. You know, kind of that's right. You have to, yeah, you have to put it in motion. It's not going to happen by magic. Yeah, you're reminding me. I um, gosh, I had called off a wedding. I know. Let's get uh -oh. personal, right? <laughs> I had called off a wedding. I was 27, um, and I had just moved out of the apartment we had together in Manhattan <laughs> right before our wedding. Um, and a girlfriend of mine called and said. I want to go climb my Machu Picchu. I was like, okay, let's go. It was the best thing I've ever done. I, I highly recommend that by the way. But I remember at the time people were like, you shouldn't be doing this. You just broke up with someone. I'm like, I should be doing this because I just broke up with someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that feeling of like, I'm not going to stop living because I'm really sad. Right. And that was one of, that was a life-changing trip. I mean, oh my God, hiking that trail, doing all those things. And I actually, you know, uh, came home with some sort of bug. We still, the doctor still don't know what I, I don't care. I remember laying there, the doctor's like, where have you been? I'm like, I hiked the trail. They're like, all right, great. And I didn't care. People were like, would you go again? I'm like in 20 seconds, right? So even when it doesn't go the way that, that we plan, and I didn't feel yucky until I got home, but even when it doesn't go the way we plan, you never regret what you see that you can't see anywhere else. And I mean, I have a whole photo album because I'm that old, so I couldn't just take my phone. I have a whole photo album that I can hold in my hands of climbing that trail and hanging out of Machu Picchu and the people I met um, and our guide as we were hiking, it was extraordinary. Um, and I, I wouldn't trade that trip for anything. And it actually was one of those, this really isn't a good idea. I'm going right now. Right. And that you never regret that. You just don't regret it. Oh, that's so amazing. Now I want to go to Machu Picchu. Not that oh. I never wanted to go. I want to go everywhere. But now, but now that as you are telling the story, like I now I want to go more. I'd like climb, went up this, my bucket list list a little bit higher. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm glad I went in my 20s too, but I'd go again tomorrow. If someone was like, can we go again? I'm like, uh-huh. Um, yeah, it was, it was such hard work and so, God, it was just, oh, you're bringing me back actually. I'm going to go look at that photo album later today. It's amazing how transformational like a trip can be, right? Mm -hmm. Like you go and you have no idea like who you're going to meet and what you're going to do. Or maybe you have some idea because you have an itinerary, 
But then like the feelings that you will feel, you have no idea. When I go on these trips, you know, like, you know, my story, like it's been 10 years or up and down and different kinds of travel and non-travel. But one day, I think on my second trip when I was in Italy, after like a really long dinner and a lot of wine and the whole night yards, I was just like, I couldn't sleep. I jet lagged. I'm just laying there and it kind of hit me. I'm like, oh my God, maybe this is what I was supposed to do when I grow up. Like, because mm. seeing the the faces of the women as they're experiencing it, like I've done travel for almost 10 years and I, I send people and when I'm lucky, they'll send me a couple of pictures back and I'm like, yes, because I can connect the dots of like, this is my work, what I've done and this is how they're experiencing it. It does not compare to actually being there with them and seeing their like faces lit up, That's light gotcha. up. Yeah. And just like, just feeling all that energy. It's kind of like traveling with your kids and you see the world through their eyes. It's like absolutely incredible. But seeing people who are, like I had these amazing, I keep talking about them, these amazing three women on one of my trips. They were each 77 years old. And I was very worried. I'm like, oh, they're a little bit older. How are they going to do this? Sarah, they outdanced me. They outwalked me. The, the zestful life they had. They were best friends since college. The stories I heard about them flying Pan Am. And like, it was just like, it was yeah. so much fun. And at the end of the trip, they told me, Anna, we've traveled a lot on very fancy safaris and cruises. And this is one of the best trips we've ever taken. Oh. I was like, oh my God, this was what I was supposed to do when I grew up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I believe you. I believe you. I mean, obviously, okay, you guys, you know, I'm her business coach, right? So I know <laughs> the ins and outs of everything she creates. And I will tell you, I mean, the, the attention to detail is pretty extraordinary. Um, and I think too, I was thinking about the Venice trip when you were talking about it earlier. I think one of the things that makes that so special is, you know, there's a certain time of life where the holidays aren't fun anymore. Like you're old, right. And it's not great for so many people. And so I think for you to provide this trip at that time, not to mention you're going to Venice. Hi, we talk about the Venetian glass. Like, can we talk about the Christmas ornaments you're coming home with or the holiday oh. gifts you're going to have for, like, can we just stop it? Like, stop. Yeah. I can't even. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but you look at that and it's, it's not only are we creating something beautiful and supporting all of the people in Venice, right. Who keep getting clobbered, you know, cause the water life, right. Like watching all that, supporting all of that plus giving themselves this gift and doing it the way you wanted to do it right during a time that can be tough for people and making it completely joyous instead, like, stop it. I can't think of anything better than that. And, and, um, yeah, I'm a little jealous. I still have one at home, but, uh, <laughs> once I don't, <clears throat> we know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Always have a spot on my trips. Always. Oh, you're the sweetest. Even like the, the night before I'm flying out, you're like, and I'm coming I'm like, Yep. Ah. <laughs> I'll, like, I'll stay in a different hotel you'll take my room <laughs> like I, I'll be like I'll sleep I'll sleep in a boat it's fine yeah. it's fine don't worry about it throw me in a gondola it's fine <laughs> yeah I mean I just I freaking love that city I think it is so special I haven't been in about 10 years and that's 10 years too long but it is so I remember I was very young the first time I went to Venice uh I want to say 18 and um god bless my parents they just freaking send me places <laughs> Stepmom, my stepmom, who's from New York, um, and my dad, would they just send me places. I felt so lucky. Um, and I remember I showed up. I'm like, wait, there's no cars here. <laughs> People still ask like, me they can take an Uber. I'm like, try. They're like, yes, <laughs> dummy. There's no cars there. I'm like, it's gorgeous. I'm like, there's no pollution. It's amazing. You want to go somewhere? You can walk anywhere. The canals are amazing. Oh my God. I like... I had, for some reason, I'd never put together that it's a city built on canals that nothing's wide enough for a car. Like I didn't even think about it. Um, but to get there and experience that entire way of living is so beautiful. And I think it's just, it's just another window into what human beings can do when we put our minds to it and to experience that. I call that having a thing. I know that's not articulate, but when I'm traveling and I have a thing where I'm like, oh my God, I'm here. This is amazing. it's a thing. That's yeah. Thing. And I, I have living, a lot of things in Venice. Yeah. I was going to say, living the life that we live and we're so jaded and everything is at a click from Amazon. Like kids are like, oh, it appears. It's just magic. Appears. Yeah. It's magic, right? <laughs> Amazon magic. But like, not a lot of things these days make us like, oh, you know, catch our breath. And Venice like makes you do that. Oh. 
I want to go back right now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I listened to a string quartet one night. I remember doing that. I was Aww. there by myself at 18. Can you stand it? Who the heck am I? Anyway, yeah, but I did that. And I For remember- me, I was by myself in Spain. <laughs> were you? I love us. I, we're like, bye. I know there's like a Sarah shaped hole in the wall. I'm like, yeah. see ya. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just love that so much. And I remember hearing a canal behind me and listening to that music and being like, oh, whose life is this? Like, how? What? And you're right. I hadn't thought about that, but you're right in our Insta world to be able to have those moments, create those moments. We need those moments, right? Psychologists and psychiatrists and scientists are telling us over and over and over, get outside. And we're like, <laughs> it's like, get outside, remember you're part of nature, be with other people, remember what it is to connect, go out and explore. Um, and I think we really need it, especially now, given our, yeah. given our Insta world. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, I want to digress from this into something that you said earlier about Disney and you're like, Oh, you know, like I love Disney. I, I may not like Disney, but that's not the point. The point is that you get to like what you get to like, and you don't get to have anyone say like, oh, what? You like Disney? And as women, we have so much of that, unfortunately, like that judgment, like you're going where? You're doing what? You're not mm -hmm. going to be home for the holidays. You're going to spend all this money. Like I love, I think on one of your podcast episodes, when one of your amazing guests, it's like, pay attention to who you hang out with. Yes. And maybe stop hanging out with the, all the naysayers. And I use that as my guiding light every day when I work with my group. I don't want, like, I talk to every single person like this on Zoom before allowing them like yeah. to come to the, to the trip. No one can just click a button because I don't want any judging. I don't want any politics. I don't want anyone like you. You know what people ask me sometimes? Like they get on the call with me and they're like, so you, are you coming on the trip? I'm like, yes, I'm coming. I'm so excited. Who's watching your kids? Wow. Really? I'm like, I tie them to the toilet for seven days and they just like hang. Uh, yeah. I just, like I said, you? woman on woman crime. We got to support each other better than that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. So yeah. like pay attention to who you hang out with and don't let those limiting beliefs like, oh, I can't go because I have kids because I have this. A lot of people have kids. A lot of people have jobs. Like we all have all these things, but it doesn't mean that we have to put ourselves last on that totem pole of like priorities. So a hundred percent. And I, I think um, actually going is a great role model for kids. I think it's really, really important for the children growing up now to see their mothers hanging out with other women, enjoying life, being with friends. Um, it is so critical in the the growing humanity of those children. And this is actually something I teach my clients too, when they're like, oh my God, I'm working so much. I'm a bad mom. I'm like, oh no, eh, we're going to just kind of just go right into that belief right now. You are an exquisite mother and you're also a woman. You're also a person. And the more that you nurture the person in you, the more you can nurture the children through mother and that, that wholeness that comes with that. And we've all seen the mom. I mean, I, to be honest, there's many a time I'm on an airplane and suddenly there's a child in my lap because I take kids from other, from moms all the time. I'm like, do you want some help with that? And if I, and if the kid comes with me, I'm like, go to the, take a nap. People are like, what are you doing? I'm like, Hey, I wish someone had done it for me. Right. And like getting that we can, we can share in that, right. There are people around you who love you. The 10 days you're gone on a trip are not 10 days. Your child will remember they are 10 days you will then use to nurture your child. And I think it is so important for us to remember they're watching yeah. and to see that mom is a person is so critical for their own development that you don't exist only to be mom. You will always be there for them. Of course, if they need you, you'll give advice. You'll be the guide. You'll be the source of love. You'll be the one to call them to be like, I think there's more in you kid. Come on. Right. We'll be there for them. We'll always do that. But we're also our own entity. And I think when children see that been proven through research, um, and a lot of different trials and therapy, you can hear and see the children who saw their mother as a human who had her own needs, desires in life versus those who didn't think she had any friends. And it happens a lot, right? Because moms feel guilty. So they only go when their kids are out, you know, and they're like, I don't think my mom has friends. I'm like, dude, your mom has friends. Let me tell you something about Friday night. Right. But the kids don't know or whatever. And that that's actually detrimental to the children, which is so interesting. It's the opposite of what you would think, but how important it is for us to role model 
taking vacations, you know, taking breaks, being with our friends and family, having in-depth conversations, enjoying the company of others, um, and then expanding that circle, meeting new people. Um, and I really appreciate what you said about who we hang out with matters. I know which episode you're talking about is one of my favorite podcast episodes too. Um, but I was just having this conversation with my daughter raising yet another woman. Right. Um, and she's having, she's in high school, God help her. Everybody send help. But yeah. So in high school, how tough it is with friend groups and what happens. And, and she's noticed her friend. She's like, mom, I'm not liking who I am when I mm -hmm. hang out with them. And I was like, dang, if there was no, never a better sign than that, right? Like, I don't know a better sign than that. Um, and I said, you know, it's really interesting when you get older, if you take the salary, the average salary of your three, four best friends, that'll be your salary. She's like, are you serious? I'm like, yep. And we don't even talk about money. We don't talk about how much we make with each other, but that's exactly what happens because who you hang out with matters. And if you're hanging out with people who are mean, people who don't like want to know anything about the world, people who are completely self-absorbed in our Insta world, people who don't understand the world beyond us. And I think I'm going to say as Americans, we really can suffer from that because we're kind of landlocked, right? It's all of us. We're there from coast to coast. It's we're all America, right? It's so beautiful to go to other places and experience all those things. Even if you've traveled before to be reminded um, of how many beautiful souls there are out there walking this earth and then being reminded that you get to hang out with them for a while and who you hang out with matters and the friendships that get made on your tours. I know. And also for me, I've gone on uh, women only tours as well. The friendships, there's several people I still keep in touch with and they're like the best, right? You just love them because you have this thing in common and it matters to you and you, ca you can't buy that. You just can't yeah. just matter so much. Absolutely. You know, Sarah, I feel like we can talk for the next 12 hours. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's because I, I have so many things that I want and then, and then I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, oh my God, she has business to run and kids to feed and all the other things to do. We both so, do. Yes. I have a feeling we're going to have a part two to this at some point. Got it. Um, but before I let you go, uh, if people more want of your goodness and brilliance, where can they find you? Yeah. Come on over to sarahwalton.com. Just like it sounds, it's Sarah with an H and Walton, like the family on TV or the family that owns Walmart, depending on your age. Um, and I am not them, by the way. Um, but yeah, so come on over to sarahwalton.com. I also have a YouTube channel, The Sarah Walton, not because I'm The Sarah Walton, but because my name was taken. Um, so you can oh. find me over there. Um, and one of the things I love to remind people about is how much of life you have and how much you actually have for anyone who's like, I actually really do want to go on a trip, but I'm not sure I have enough. I have these amazing abundance journal prompts that you can grab. Um, and help you kind of get your mind right as you book your trip. Yeah. Awesome. We'll put the link to the prompts below and then all the other places where we put the links because I'm so eloquent right now. <laughs> all the places. Links. In all the places. Yeah. All the places, all the things. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much. This was so great to chat. We, we touched upon so many important things. I hope this resonates at least with one other soul out there and will help someone make that first baby step to their towards their next goal, a trip, a time off, and just like a second to like smell the roses. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna.